which I don't really think you should call it that. And um, I guess I make this relatively frequently, considering the amount of different people that I speak to each month. And usually, a couple of times a week, I talk to somebody who has just been completely wronged by the system. And it's beyond infuriating, actually. Um, but let's first of all talk about what an expert by, by experience is. An expert by experience is somebody who is an expert in that field because they've actually experienced the thing that they're an expert in. Yeah. It may sound revolutionary, but I actually believe that the best people to help people who are struggling with any sort of particular infliction are actually people who have personally experienced that thing. <gasps> Yes, really. I'm not even just talking about things like eating disorders. I'm talking about things like broken fucking arms. You know, the doctor, bless him, that I went to and the surgeon that did my arm, put a plate in it and things like that. I could just tell he'd never broken his arm before. Even, even he's only put this cast on me last week and he said, oh yeah, you know, I want you to be able to, I want you to try moving it more, do things typing at your computer would be good, do that. And I get home and I actually can't twist this thing. So you try and type at a computer when you can't flatten your hand onto the desk. I'm sitting there, I'm thinking, he's, he, he definitely hasn't tried this, has he? <laughs> so physical things too. And then when we come to illnesses such as eating disorders, how can possibly, how can possibly somebody who has not personally experienced an eating disorder know what it feels like to experience an eating disorder and it so I often get asked um and I don't mind this question I often get asked oh what are your qualifications for being a recovery coach and I just say well absolutely nothing I don't have any qualifications I'm an expert by experience I certainly didn't do any courses I get asked that a lot which course did you take to become a recovery coach and I just I answer that with sweetheart I was being a recovery coach before there were courses for recovery coaches um because that's also true it's I'm very proudly an expert by experience. I have no respect. This is not going to go down well. I have no respect for courses that teach people how to be a recovery coach. No respect for it whatsoever. <laughs> because, so you think that you can actually teach somebody how to be an expert by experience? It's the experience that makes you an expert by experience. Anyway, so I often worry about the eating disorder field for this reason because I'm not quite sure what the original reason was but you look you look at other sort of recovery fields like um, substance abuse and to be a therapist or to be a coach or to be anybody that guides people with substance abuse issues to recovery you have to have recovered from substance abuse you can't even get a job in that field without having recovered from substance abuse. So that is a field that recognises that people who have experienced substance abuse are the best people to help other people who are currently experiencing substance abuse. And it works rather well. Then we've got the eating disorder field that for whatever reason did the opposite track. It was kind of like, all right, well, evidently people who have eating disorders are just hysterical and crazy. So actually what we need to do is we just need to have professionals tell them what to do. People that haven't got this craziness that these people have. And I do think that it did start off more with the whole only white men could be therapists sort of thing. And, you know, like I can imagine the field of eating disorder and field of therapy was predominantly white men who saw people who had eating disorders as hysterical women. And that was the stereotype. So of course we can't let these hysterical women rule the field. Whereas substance abuse, oh, many men have substance abuse. So oh, we have to respect these people. And then we have to also respect them when we recover. Anyway, I'm not going to go into that too much. But for whatever reason, the field of eating disorders was founded upon the concept that people who have recovered from eating disorders were actually... A lot of people don't actually think that we exist, recover people, because apparently you never recover, recover from an eating disorder. So maybe it's because we don't exist. Maybe that's the reason that we can't actually lead the field. Somebody said to me Wednesday, um, 
oh, you know, I think that recovery coaches are really important, experts by experience are really important because they fill in the gaps. They're needed to fill in the gaps in the eating disorder field. And I was just like, wait a minute. I, like, first of all, I'm not poly filler. And second of all, we're not filling in the gaps. <laughs> we actually are the steps. <laughs> like, we are the stones in this because the gaps are so big in the eating disorder recovery field and the field is so ineffective that we're not just filling in the gaps, we're actually usually the ones that are getting people recovered because treatment's not doing it, not doing it adequately. I think that you have to be kind of, it's the odd case that actually goes through treatment and then recovers and lives happily ever after. That's, that's the odd person that does that. It's not the majority. The majority go in and out and in and out and in and out. And then eventually they either work it out themselves or they work with someone who's an expert by experience who can tell them what it feels like to do recovery and what to look out for. And how to overcome those feelings and how to face their fears and all of those things that we actually need to do. But how can you tell somebody how to overcome a fear of something if you have never had a fear of that thing? It's, it's beyond belief that this field is still operating like this. And I really do think that it does need a huge overhaul. It just needs ripping out from, because the roots I just think are based in psychoanalysis and old white men telling everybody else what they think sounds clever not what's actually realistic not what's going on they feel like they're not even interested some of them in what is actually going on and what people with eating disorders are actually capable of which is actually i've used the word actually a lot haven't i is actually usually far more <laughs> than your average person because of the genetic shitstorm that makes us high achievers, most of us, not all of us. I don't include myself in that. I'm talking about my clients, but anyway. So it's this massive underestimating of what a person with an eating disorder is capable of, which is just throughout this entire field. And I do think it's founded on the, oh, a person with an eating disorder is a hysterical teenager who doesn't know what they're doing and just wants to be thin and needs a good, you know, like we, we, we can't let that person make any decisions. We just got to psychoanalyze them and try and work out why they are the way they are. <sighs> anyway, so long story short, and I've been harping on it. Oh, I've been harping on about this for years and I get tired trying to change this field. And I still don't necessarily know how. It's a bit like how, it's the same question as how do we make America stop being racist? It's like, <clears throat> don't know another question that i just feel is like how do we make america actually adopt a national healthcare system and it's like you look at the system and it's just so in twined and so deeply messed up and so many people that are benefiting from it and making money in different places that you're like oh we're never going to convince everybody that we need to do this that's exactly how i feel about the eating disorder treatment system there's so many people making money out of the dysfunctional treatment system that is eating disorder treatment that you just sort of look at it and go like, oh, I don't even know how we would start to untangle this old mess because people are too attached to it because people are profiting from the dysfunction. So how do you change that? Anyway, that's my question to you. How do you change dysfunctional systems and doing so in both national healthcare and in eating disorder healthcare and probably so many issues of the same sort of thing where it's like the dysfunction is born out of social injustice and so many different also dysfunctional aspects of society how do you overhaul the whole thing answers on a postcard to bye <laughs>